Hello Sharks, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com, taking a look at another hand from the Party Poker Live YouTube channel. Huge thanks to them for letting me go through their footage and pick out many, many, many amazing hands to share with all of you. Make sure you check them out at YouTube.com slash Party Poker Live. Today's hand is from a $100,000 buy-in Party Poker Premier League, which was essentially a series of, I believe, eight-handed sit-and-goes. This is a slightly old hand from 2010. COVID was not even a thought back then. This features Roland DeWolf. He gets in there. He battles hard. He can make big folds. He can make big bluffs. He can make big calls. He does it all. And he is battling against Yevgeny Tomashenko. He is one of the players I looked up to a lot whenever he was in there battling all the time. He would just make creative plays. You never knew what he was going to do. He was tough to play against. And um, I always wanted to play like Yevgeny. Let's see if I would figure out how to do that today as you can see lots and lots of fun players i'll tell you the pre-flop action because we essentially skipped it here we are playing 1000 2000 with 230,000 chip effective stacks so 200 i'm sorry 100 uh, 115 big blinds deep i can't do math in this scenario under the gun limped under gun plus one, limp, 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 limp. All these people limped because, you know, it's 2010. Look, Phil Helmuth there. He gets in there. He battles as well. Everyone sees the flop. Flop comes queen, jack, six. Positions are... Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the positions are here. Let's take a look at the flop action. We will get through it. Okay. <laughs> in this scenario, That's Roland, funny. under the gun plus one, bets 13,000 into the 13,000 chip pot on queen jack six with pocket sixes. Pretty good hand, right? This is definitely a spot where you want to be betting with your best hands and your draws. Thousand. Fold. Fold. Bunch of hands fold. Folds around to Yevgeny. In the, what's ETN? He's in the cutoff with queen jack of diamonds. On queen jack six, I would definitely put in a raise, especially playing pretty deep stack. This is a scenario where if you raise and get all the money in, you're usually pretty happy. That said, if Evgeny did that here, he would be pretty unhappy because he's against one of the few hands that somehow has him beat. Typically, though, on very coordinated boards like queen jack six with two spades, when your opponent is blasting it into a lot of people, their range is going to be very strong. And you have to presume Roland's not limping queens or jacks from early position, right? Which means the only hand you realistically lose to here is pocket sixes. Which is pretty unlikely. There's only three combinations of that. Notice, though, that Roland could easily have a hand like a flush draw. Any, any spade draw that makes logical sense. Also, he could easily have a hand like king ten that has loads of equity. Or he could easily have a hand like king queen. Or queen ten that would reasonably call a raise that you crush. So this is a spot where I think I would go ahead and put in a pretty sizable raise. Um, Roland bet 13k. I'd make it something like 36k. This Premier League, this was actually this particular Premier League, really the emergence of full flush Schwartz. Uh, well, he isn't at the table this time. Uh, there's Fraser and Helmuth. Get him. Great commentary. This was the emergence of a guy who's not at the table. Okay, thank you. I don't know who the commentators are. I apologize. <laughs> that was funny to me. All right, Yevgeny calls. Now, going to fold around to Safina. I'm not even sure who Safina is. With queen three in the big blind. I want you to tell me what you would do in this spot with the queen three when it folds around to you. Top pair, no kicker, multi-way pot. Would you fold, call, or would you put in a raise? And if you do raise, would you make it 35,000 or would you make it big like 80,000? Top pair, marginal kicker, facing a bet and a call. What do you do in a multi-way pot? Let me know in the comment section below. This is a spot where you have a really, really easy fold with top pair, bad kicker. A lot of people make this blunder of sticking around with hands that are going to have a really difficult time continuing on the later betting rounds. Now, I realize queen three is just drawing dead right here, right? So I'm sure a lot of people in the comments said, you're drawing dead, just fold. But you don't know you're dead, right? In this scenario, Roland could easily have a draw or a hand like a jack that he decided to blast it. 
And Yevgeny could easily have a jack or a draw, right? So, like, queen three actually is going to be the best hand here a lot of the time. But you're going to have a nearly impossible time getting to the showdown with what is the best hand, especially if a lot of money goes into the pot. So this is a spot where you have a pretty easy fold with the queen three. Do not make the error, the blunder, of sticking around too loose in post-flop pots, especially when you are facing a big bet and a call, because that indicates two reasonable ranges. I love the sideways. Vanessa Russo there as well. There's the fancy Vanessa when I first got into poker. <laughs> Just like my, I wanted this to be my girlfriend when I first got into poker. <laughs> I'm not sure who's commenting, but if uh, Vanessa's still out there, if you want to have a boyfriend, the commentator would like to be your boyfriend. Well, that's the right. original bombshell. But yeah, you don't, you know, you get. This was from 2010. Don't forget. Do not cancel me, please. 300,000 oh, to work with, and uh, I, I guess Tim O'Shenko's already played it a bit weird by just okay. flatting. Pretty much uh, All right, the queen three calls. Again, like I said, I don't like it. Um, commentator just said that Yevgeny played it a little bit oddly by just flatting, and I agree. I would have raised here. The only time I would not raise here is if I just know Roland's range is really wide and full of junk, <laughs> which uh, maybe it is. Not this time, but maybe it is. Um, because if you, even if you think he has a good hand, what is a good hand on queen jack six? It's going to be like ace queen, king queen, queen ten good draws right and all those hands you want to play a big pot with so anyway i i'm, I'm kind of surprised if he did not raise uh the wolf's lead he's he's obviously led for strength here turn is a seven safina checks the queen three obviously like i said queen three is just have an impossible time continuing against the bet on the turn um i mean keep betting if you're in rolling shoes right in the pocket sixes it's obviously a drawy board as well. It's like a lot of back cards right now. I've never beaten for twelve dollars. No chance. I have no chance. <laughs> no chance. That's like drawing dead. Well, that's why I'd like to bet it. <laughs> Don't really know how all the money didn't go in on yeah. the prop. No one ever accused you of being a gambler. <laughs> it just takes the nuts. Yeah, I think you know it was five ways, and uh, Roland is all the Premier Leagues he's played, and he's played quite tight. I think I I always feel like Timoshenko must have picked up on that. And uh, you see what, what happens at the end here. That's what he Even if Roland has been very, very tight, that, that's not a justification for playing very slowly with a literal top two pair. Okay? Don't, don't think that just because my opponent's been kind of tight in the previous events I played with him, that they must have sets. Even though, again, not a great example because he clearly has a set. If I'm sitting here in DeWolf's shoes, though, I'm definitely just betting the turn. I'm going to be betting pretty big. In the spot, the pot was 53K. And Roland does go for 45k, so I think that's good. Back around to Timoshenko again. If I was in his shoes, I would call at this point, because now when Roland blasts it twice, he either has a good draw or a good made hand. And, you know, again, I don't think you're beat all that often, but now I think you want to keep all the draws in, given the turn is a just, like, total brick. Yeah. It's like he almost feels... Also, you really want to keep in the big blind with, like, random queens and jacks, right? Feels like the, the only any of Roland's value hands he's either tying or losing to. Roland led for 13 and uh, Tim Moshenko just, just flatted. Oh, okay. And so did Safina, who's the qualifier. Yeah. Giovanni Safina, he got through a bunch of live qualifiers to get here and ended up getting third in this whole event, which was a huge result for him. You may say, should we just raise the turn now with the Queen Jack? And I think, look, I think it's reasonable and viable, but I have to presume, I have to presume that Tomashenko thinks that DeWolf's range is just wider than it quote-unquote should be or he may think he's going to fold out the vast majority of his marginal made hands to a raise if you think roland's betting stuff like king queen or queen 10 you really want to keep him in the pot <coughs> yeah. bonus question time did you think you're gonna get a bonus question today probably not this is a spot where now the wolf checks the ace of spades river remember the board is queen of spades jack of spades six of clubs seven of hearts ace of spades Everything in the whole world gets there. You're sitting here with the queen jack of diamonds when DeWolf checks. In this spot, in Yevgeny's shoes, what do you do with your, well, now sp surprisingly marginal two pair? Do you check it and hope to win at the showdown? Do you bet small, like 45K into the 150K pot? Actually, 143K pot. I know all of you out there have your calculators out. Do you bet medium like 100k or do you blast it like 150k i want you to pause the video again and write what you would do in the comment section below all right look if 
I'm sitting in this scenario, I would expect the wolf to show up with some aces, which you beat, that will always fold to a bet, or maybe maybe call a small bet, but usually a small bet's not ideal. Or he's sitting here with a hand that he's getting tricky with, like a flush. He did go for this weird snap check. Or perhaps he has a decently strong hand, like a flush or a straight, or maybe maybe the dreaded pocket sixes. If he has the dreaded pocket sixes, will he ever fold to a bet? Notice I'm saying here, would we ever turn the two pair into a bluff? Look, very rarely are you looking to turn the two pair into a bluff. But here, I actually think it is at least a consideration. Because in this scenario, the wolf could easily have ace-queen with a weird early position limp. Again, I don't think it's solver approved, but he could have it. He could also be sitting here with a hand like ace-jack. He could easily have queen-jack for a chop. So should we ever bluff this? I'm not sure. Look, I'm not creative enough to do this. I would never go for the bluff. Should you go for a value bet? Do you think that DeWolf's going to call down with the ace-king or the ace-ten that decided to bluff the flop in the turn? Doesn't even have those in his range. I don't know. One thing worth noting, though, is that some players, I'm not saying this is what Roland does, but some players in this scenario, when they are sitting here with a non-flush, will fold to a big bet very close to every time. And if there is some world where you can make your opponent fold out literally every hand besides a flush, and you know because of their snap check on the river that they never have a flush, because a lot of people, when they have a flush, they give it at least a little bit of consideration. If you can make him fold every hand worse than a flush and he has no flushes, then obviously you should bet, because if it goes check, check, you lose sometimes to random two pairs and sets that will fold out to a big bet on the river. Does that logic apply in 2021? Shout out to everyone who's watching in 2031. You're 10 years late. If you're watching in 2031, let me know. I'd be interested to know how many people are watching this video 10 years later. Um, look, I'm never turning this hand into a bluff. If I did have a hand like King Queen, though, or Queen 10, or King Jack, or Jack 10, I think bluffing those hands would actually be very, very viable. The reason you perhaps don't want to bet a hand like Queen Jack here is that your opponents are not always going to fold two pair in trips, or two pair in sets. And also, you actually beat a lot of hands that will pretty reasonably fold, like king-queen, or maybe even a hand like ace-ten. If it goes check, bet on the river, ace-ten is going to fold out. You may say, why not make a small bet? You're going to find the GTO solver really doesn't like small bets in position on the river. Usually you're betting very polarized. But hey, if your opponent will call a river bet with a hand like ace-king, which is reasonable, ace-ten, which is reasonable, maybe, um, I don't even know, hand like queen 10 or king queen then i think a small bet could be reasonable but that's not something you want to do against strong opponents let's see what evgeny does lots of build up it's about as bad as river as it gets for the three sixes yeah the three sixes and the queen i'm sure all the uh the commenters here on youtube are like you're talking too long this is a five minute video but no this is actually a weird one and believe it or not there are still plenty of players in 2021 who will snap check the river when they don't have a flush and fold everything to a big bet. They exist, I promise. Jack also. Well, this is where Tim Oshenko decides oh, wait, to turn his hand into a bluff, which is a really advanced play, oh, wow. isn't it? Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, you don't see that too often. And he must have really felt that Slightly over pot. wasn't good uh, to make this play. I actually don't hate even a bigger bet. I think even a bigger bet may be ideal. Back in uh, 2010, people did not use over bets very often, but I bet today if you're going to make this bluff, and this is a bluff, I think, has to be if you're making this bluff i think actually a bigger bet could even be fine um Yevgeny's very close to all in i don't know if he's actually putting roland all, all in i think roland would have a few chips left if he did call in this spot i would just make them put all of them in you're gonna find a lot of people really do not want to put in all their money you can only make a play like this against a strong player like roland who's capable of making a fold i mean yeah there's just not that many many hands that uh, you lose to with jack queen that's the problem with this play, right? Which is why I said I'd much prefer a hand like King Jack, Jack 10, King Queen, Queen 10 type hands to do this bluff. Another commentator said you can only make this play against good players. And no disrespect to Roland, but I would venture to say that you want to do this play against players who are afraid of the nuts, who, draft, who, de who uh, deathly fear the nuts, who think that this young man here is only going to do this with the nuts. I can guarantee you, this young man here is not only going to do this with a nuts. Not because I see this hand, but because people who look like this young man here, Yevgeny, 
do this with more than just the nuts, I promise you. Such a good read on the situation to make this play. Thank you, my dad, the same hand. Roll and folds. He has to see it. Yevgeny shows him the bad news. Yevgeny thinks he probably bluffed him off the same hand because how could you possibly fold a better hand? And Roland is sick. Oh, wow. Roland announced fold and then he showed him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Roland folded. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, I got his read bang on Couldn't there. see any weakness in you at all. I just... Oh, he bluffed him? <laughs> You're on my team. Did you think... You, you didn't think you were bluffing, right? Because you said you thought you had the same hand. Well, I... That's technically a bluff if I'm trying to get him off a chop. That's for sure. Uh, such a horrible rhythm. <laughs> Look, I think that actually was a bluff. Yevgeny's a sicko. He gets in there, he battles. That said, there is some world where Yevgeny was, like, really blasting it in this game, in which case he was value betting, right? If, like, Yevgeny's clearly battling, clearly value betting and bluffing a lot, then maybe he's value betting? I don't know. Yevgeny, if you're watching, let me know what you're doing here. I'm curious. Can you remember 2010? I can't. I can't barely remember yesterday, but if you can remember 2010, congratulations. That's going to be it for today. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. Good luck in your games. Have a great week. And run hot. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And as a thank you, I'm going to channel all of my poker knowledge into your brain right now. Oh, wait, that didn't work. Sorry, you're going to have to keep studying. Go ahead and click the subscribe button right here, and I'll see you in the next video.